take a moment and think about your garden in the fall. If you're like most of us, you probably forget about it after you pull that last crop of veggies. And while our harsh winters and chilly falls don't necessarily invoke those green thumb feelings, it doesn't mean you can't get a jump on your gardening long before spring is on your radar. We're being joined by the president of the Minnehaha County Master Gardeners, Cammie Jacobson. She's in the studio to tell us what we can do right now to set ourselves and our gardens up for success when it comes to those summer veggies. Okay, so this started with me asking you some questions about an area of my yard. I got garden envy when I went to, with you to harvest your garden, and yes. I want a vegetable garden, and so I found okay. a spot for it. Yes. Okay, so, so walk me through this now. So it's on the west side of your house, which is going to give you good sun for, you know, six to eight hours of sun. Um, and you had shrubs and plants in there, and the soil is pretty good. So we're just going to build off of that. And so what I want to, one thing we don't really realize with soil because we can't see it and it's all, um, they're all microorganisms that we can't see, is that it's, the soil contains billions of organisms that their own, it's their own civilization. And they have pathways and freeways and me methods of communication with each other and the science is just since we have my uh, you know electron microscopes we can now start to see this in the last you know a couple of de few decades but it's really a, an emerging thing to really un get and we still don't know a lot about all the the different things that rich can culture that's down there that feeds i mean we're only as the plants are only as good as the soil they're grown in and you said that even like from 50 some yards away yeah, or something. Yeah, plants can communicate. communicate. Yes, like, this yes, is blowing it's, mind. yes. So when it comes to the health of our soil, what you're saying is that there is this rich community, mm -hmm. this rich microbiome right. below our soil. So is, are you telling me that we're anti-tilling? Yeah. Well, why till? Why break it up? I mean, this, the culture can get reestablished over time, but you're you're really ahead to just build off of the the soil that you have. And what you have back there is is decent soil. So let's just take it and improve it, and improve it by building up instead and, of tilling it. And up. the and soil will kind of it. You think it shrinks because it gets more compact. It actually, the m microorganisms kind of eat the the food of yeah. the compost or whatever you're putting down you know dead leaves straw sticks whatever you think about a forest and it's it's just this active alive thing and so it will shrink and so you think you know that's what you want to do is you want to create great. this great culture on top of and the culture and not mess with the culture that's below. So I'm going to look at this microbiome of, of organisms below us as like a city of, right. and I'm going to look as a, at a tiller like a, just a tornado coming through and mm -hmm. wrecking it all. And instead, I want to build up, and that's often referred to as lasagnas or like a soil lasagna. Yes. Okay. So well, and it was kind of a concept that was created at it's it. Yeah, it's a catchy phrase, lasagna yeah. gardening. But you know, it it has some interesting components. One, the first. It takes things that you have around anyway. And yeah. so you've taken, you have bare soil. You've taken yep. out your shrubs. You've taken out your weeds. Now lay down some plain cardboard, cardboard. which is wood, a wood product. Okay. So it's going to decompose over time and anyway. And that's going to stop leaves from grow, or weeds from growing back it, up a little bit if too? If there's other weeds that are in seed form right now, yeah. it, it blocks out the air from that. And, and it will break down. Then put other things on top of it. Okay. So you're raking anyway, put your, put your leaves down and just Keep. fill it and it, fill it high. Yeah. I mean, spread them out. And then I like to do a mixture of compost, a, some manure, not a ton of manure okay. and topsoil, okay. but a lot of compost. And then just mix a little it. bit of that top layer up. So yes, that so that you spread up, mostly you spread out the manure because yeah. that can get too rich. And then just keep adding that as it shrinks, but but layer it up, layer it high this this fall First year. and let it break down and let the water and the Sweet. time over the winter and spring. And then you just plant right into it in the spring. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have a nice setting. I'm not going to mess up what's already there. No, I'm going to layer cardboard or straw or paper, some leaf things mm -hmm. I have around, making mm -hmm. use of that, less trips to the dump too, with right. like my leaf bag, right? Yes. 
Making sure I don't use things that probably had pesticides. Don't weed. Don't, don't use pesticides or weeds. And then I'm going to add in the compost some aged or heat treated manure, right? But yes. spread it, spread that out some topsoil, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to let it do. I'm going to let it do its own work. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time to planting in the spring, no tilling still. No -till. It's just this has made just a nice microbiome. And I like to cover my garden in the spring with something that's going to decompose. So I tend to use straw okay. just because it's a weed barrier. It helps keep moisture in, but and then also it decomposes and it becomes another layer in that lasagna. Okay. But, you know, you can use other things. You can use leaves. I've used shredded newspaper because the ink is usually soy based. You can shred shred that. And it, but, you know, you can you can use other things too. Um, so I'm going to get this going right now and then what mm -hmm. we're going to do is as we head into the spring is we're going to do another get together again where we can kind of say here's where we are mm -hmm. now let's start planning out what that garden looks like because I already have dreams of this yes. trellis of I purple know. beans I've got plans a lot of kale is included in the plants. A lot of tomatoes. A lot of tomatoes. Yeah. And so we can kind of figure out how each of those plants have their own little areas. And too. you know next year house is going to be um, warmer because it's a it's a it's got thermal it, mass yes and so you, you and then you need to rotate some plants like you always want to rotate mm -hmm. your tomatoes so you know we, we have to just think about that you have this arch which is going to provide some shade behind it on the east side of the arch which is a great spot to put things that are a little can use a little cooler environment yeah we I mean, kind of figure out the best place for everything, mm -hmm. but the key is going to be what I do right now to mm -hmm. make my soil healthy. To set the foundation. And none of that includes a tiller. No. Put the tiller down. Yeah. I mean, that's a relief, I think. Right. Yeah. I think that we, we all want that. So yeah. thank you so much, Cammie. You're welcome. We've got more Kello and Levine right after this break. We'll be right back after this.